You know, disasters don't always happen when you're comfortable at home. If you work in a big city or an office setting, you may want to think about having some get-home type gear with you at all times, be it in your vehicle or in your office. And this type of a bag would blend in a whole lot more in a city or office setting than, say, a tactical backpack. So, let's check it out. Alright everybody, welcome back. So what I tried to do with this video is find probably the most office, modern office setting kind of bag that wouldn't really raise any eyebrows um, for a get home bag. Now, less for your vehicle because if you're going to have it in your vehicle, really nobody's going to probably see it and you can probably hide it well enough where nobody would. This is more for having gear with you. Uh, if you live in a city where you maybe rely on public transportation and you can't uh, just toss a bag in your car and drive to work and park it there, something like this might come in handy. You could bring something like this into your office setting maybe, um, put it in your desk, put it under your desk, wherever, where you know it's going to be fairly secure, and not mess with it, and nobody would really raise an eyebrow. It just looks like another kind of expensive laptop type uh, backpack. Um, very modern, very city, very styled, not your typical kind of molly covered, you know, tactical backpack. So. That's one of the reasons why I chose this one. Now, there's going to be people that say, oh, you're crazy, that's too expensive, that's too fancy. By the way, it isn't expensive, it's 80 bucks. It's not two or $300 like most of these hard shell backpacks. But that's another benefit to it as well, is it is a hard shell backpack. This will keep your gear very, very safe. You know, you have a nice carbon fiber top here that will keep everything safe. You do have a lock on it. Again, it's a TSA lock. They can pop it open, the TSA can. No lock is going to keep everybody out, but it might keep the ca casual observer away from it. You do have a really nice handle on it. And you have a side here, which I will show you in a minute, on how you can run a uh, power bank inside, charge your radios, your devices, or whatever. Kind of a hidden tactical feature that isn't all that tactical. <laughs> so I'm going to open up the bag and show it to you while we talk a little bit about it. Now this is kind of, a, like I said, a more stylish kind of thing. It will blend in maybe in an office setting a little bit better. Let's take a look on the inside. I didn't unzip that all the way. There we go. So you got a nice bunch of stuff in there. And for, in preparation for this video, I grabbed a bunch of, you know, get-home bug-out type gear. Now again, this is not a get-home bag, what to put in it type video. This is a video showing you how much it can hold. <laughs> so some of the stuff you may argue isn't bug-out type stuff, but, you know, for me, this is more of a just testing the capacity of the bag, less about what's in it. So as you can see, you've got a lot, a lot of pouches and places to stick stuff, you know, lots of deep pouches in here. Very, very well padded and protected in the bottom. Let's take a look here at the pouches, because that wasn't on camera. Very well padded, very well protected. If you were going to put a laptop in here, heck, that'd be pretty cool, you know. You do have a pocket up top here that has a nice long area inside. Uh, maybe put a map in there or something. I would, I would probably... Make sure I carry a map of my local area if I did work in a city. Uh, when I lived in New York City, I carried a uh, subway map with me everywhere. Because as well as I knew the subways, there was always that person, Hey, I live in Brooklyn. Come out and visit me later. <laughs> I have no idea how to take a train out there. Because I take the trains in Manhattan. So I always carried a subway map. Now another neat feature of this, you'll notice the sides here have snaps on them. This can be opened like this quickly and casually. You know, maybe you want to toss something in there, take something out, close it right back up. And if you want... These come undone, so you can open it all the way up. And I realize this isn't in camera right this second, but I'll get it back in there for you. You can open it all the way up like that and pack it like a suitcase. Now this comes in three different colors. This is the uh, silver. And it comes in a black and a, a gold and the silver. I think the silver is kind of cool. Black, would probably to me, would stand out a lot more, especially if I'm wearing business attire, like a suit or something. Um, the silver kind of, it's there, but it's not obnoxious. And the, the gold, nah, wouldn't do the gold. Just for my own personal preference. It's just too gaudy for me. But uh, you get the idea here. And also on the outside of this is a neat little feature that I almost missed when I was reviewing it before when I was looking at it. Uh, it's got a little side pocket here. So, if you were to say, if you were able to, place a particular self-defense item in there, you would be able to do that very, very unobnoxiously, you know. Even if somebody wanted to see inside the bag, that's not very noticeable and you just open it up and it's not standing there right out as you open the bag. 
That all depends on what your particular work environment would allow, all that stuff. Very nice straps. Got to say, it's well made. It's very well made. It does feel like a higher end type of type backpack. Um, and again, it does feel like, you know, a typical little going to an office with your laptop and your tablet and all your other gear type backpack. Now, the size on it, okay, it's 11.8 inches, 8 inches by 3 inches by 17.7 inches. The bag itself, they say it weighs about 2.6 pounds. I'd probably say a pound and a half. It doesn't feel that heavy. It's um, not heavy at all. It's a really nice, well-made bag. You do have an EVA material on, on here, not only to uh, help the uh, backpack from getting damaged, but to protect the contents of it. So if you were to use this for a laptop or a tablet or whatever, it would do a good job keeping everything safe. Another neat feature is because you have that kind of carbon fiber, plastic-ish, I don't know if it's real carbon fiber, I doubt it, back here, it is going to be a lot more waterproof than, say, a cheap bag. Um, I, I, somebody once recommended me go to uh, Walmart, buy a Jansport backpack, throw it in the dirt a few times, make it look kind of beat up and old, sit it out in the sun, let it get a little faded, and use that as your get-home bag. That's going to look a little weird if I'm going to an office all dressed up in a nice suit and clean and, you know, coming from my office and walking home with something that looks like, you know, some 12-year-old kid took it to school for four years, you know. It's not going to fit in. What you want to do if, you're, if you have a get-home type situation, and I always use 9-11 because I remember watching the people leaving. I remember watching people walk away from the towers as they were falling and as the chaos was going on. And I kind of studied what, you know, they were doing. And all of them either had a briefcase, a leather briefcase, or some kind of backpack or something like that. Now, nothing like this, but I've seen in modern business settings, these are pretty common, actually, these hard shell backpacks. And I like it because of the size, too. It's very, very thin. Like we said, three inches thick. Um, it looks like it wouldn't hold much, but wait till you see what we can fit in this thing. So, what we're going to do here is give me a minute, and I'm going to demonstrate the, the little power outlet there. There's a plug on the inside here. We're going to demonstrate that, as well as fill this thing up full of stuff. You will be amazed what it carries. Now, again, what I'm putting in here might not be right for your particular situation. If you live... I'm, I'm packing this for more of a long-term thing, and even then, this isn't a perfect get-home bag. Say, you know, uh, 10 miles away from a home at your office. That's how I would pack this for. Um, if you live a mile away from your work environment... Maybe you wouldn't need all this. You certainly wouldn't need all this. If you live 10 miles away in a city where you normally walk, you know, a good distance, maybe you take public transportation, subways, trains, whatever, something like this would probably fit in a lot better um, and with the gear that I'm going to put in it. Remember, 10 miles, if you're not used to walking a long distance, 10 miles is a pretty long walk. Um, I remember when I was younger and did one of those Jerry Lewis walkathon things, and it was 26 miles, and I was fairly young at the time. And even that tired me out, you know, in my teens. So, 10 miles, as you get a little older, it's going to tire you out, especially if you're not an athlete. Um, and remember, we're not doing it at a run. We're doing it at a walk. So, let me pack up the gear, show you how much stuff you can get in this. Thing. All right, so before we start stuffing this thing full of gear, I wanted to show you how this, for me, would work. Now, this is an old BlackWeb charger. It's actually cracked. <laughs> we're just using it as a demo today. Um, you would stick it in there. Take this out here, plug that in like that, and there you go. You have this ready to go. Now you can also use this if you wanted to use the PD outlet as well. And over here on the side, let's get that up there so you can see it. There you go. So you have both outlets. You have your PD outlet, your 60 watt PD outlet, and your uh, USB C outlet, a uh, USB outlet. So all in all, pretty darn cool. I like the fact that you have that. It is low key. It doesn't scream, look at me, I'm, you know, an expensive backpack with uh, power capabilities, but it is very low key. It is kind of cool, too. You could probably even manage to stuff a small, flexible kind of solar panel in this, too, on the inside there, if you needed to charge that up. But definitely pretty cool. All right, let me fill up this bag full of gear and show you how much it can hold. All right, got it fully packed. i um, actually amazed at how much it really held. Again, this isn't a this is a get home type thing. This isn't a long term, heavy on food, heavy on gear type bag. It's for a basic get home from your office if you have to, you know, do it on foot for say 10, 15, 20 miles without overloading yourself and carrying a ton of stuff. Now this would assume that you would be carrying your, your water bottle or whatever with you. 
Um, I always have a water bottle with me or a bladder or something. So it's somewhere on my person or on my vehicle or whatever. This would assume that you're carrying your liquid with you. It also would assume, and I'm going to be very honest with you, I didn't want to dig through my bug out bag to grab my Silcock key, um, that you're carrying one of those. If you've ever seen a Silcock key, um, it's basically for opening water spigots on the side of buildings. Um, the, you've probably seen them. They're just like little locked up kind of things on the side of a door, on the side of a building, a small little door. Uh, and it comes with all the different attachments to open that, as well as turn the water on. Now, we're talking about a worst-case scenario. I don't want you guys to go out and buy one of these Silcock keys and go running around opening it. But that isn't in here, but it can easily fit. So, let's open up the bag and check out what's inside. I'm going to tilt the camera down a little bit so you can actually see what I'm doing. And uh, we'll see what we got in there. All right, so as you can see, it's pretty full. I got the back, you know, puffed out a little bit there. Uh, but it's pretty full, so it's really not all that bad. But you can see it's sticking out there. Now, we do have these locks here. There is a way to set this. This is the universal TSA unlocker if they needed to, if you had to travel with this thing. Uh, basically, you're going to push this in, roll it to the combination you want. Let me bring you up close to that. Roll it to the combination you want. You'll push that in with a pen or something, and then let it out, and there you go. you got your combo set. So it's very easy to set. And these do have locks on them. I'm going to bring one down here to show you. They would just lock in there like that. There we go. Got it the wrong way. They would just lock in there like that. Um, really easy to get in there. As you can see, I'm sorry, I'm by, trying to not block it with my hand, but that's how they go. So, let's open up this guy and see what I got in here and show you how much gear is in here. Now again, I only have one bit of food in here. You can change that out. I have a Mountain House entree. I probably wouldn't carry that in a bug out situation or a get home bag. I'd probably just carry some energy bars or something to kind of sustain me. But I might throw one in just in case it's an overnight situation. Maybe it's not safe to travel at night. Maybe I have to bug out and hide somewhere, you know. So I would carry that anyway, maybe. I'm not sure. Probably would. So the first thing I'm going to do is open it up. And you see there's a ton of gear in here. I'm going to pop the side so we can open this all the way up and show you everything that I fit in here. So inside here, like I said, I do have a Mountain House entree. Okay. And I like the fact that you can open this, but not open it all the way. Did you see how I undid these sides here? Um, you kind of have it open in a V if you just want to reach in here and grab that entree, let's say. So, something else you may or may not want to put in a get-home bag is a cook kit. This is the Boundless Voyage Titanium Cook Kit. Super lightweight, easy to carry. Um, I did a review on this a while back. Definitely worth the money on it. They're really not that expensive either. And it's just two little things inside here. I have a little uh, alcohol stove, a little collapsible cup. I have some uh, a can opener and some pot stands for the alcohol stove, so it just sits on the stove itself. Very easy to carry. The climate little pad, um, that might be neat as a pillow. Might be neat if you have to sit down on a wet area. You blow this up, it's a little seating pad, sitting pad. I do have a very basic first aid kit here. This is the Adventure Medical Kit you buy in Walmart. However, I have modified this one. This one actually came out of my scooter um, inside there. There is a tourniquet and everything in here. Uh, I do have alcohol for the alcohol stove. You may choose to carry it differently. In a small kind of bug out situation, I may only take one portion of this. You know, maybe just enough to run that, run that little uh, alcohol stove in here one time. But this is just uh, isopropyl rubbing alcohol. Um, actually, it's denatured alcohol from uh, Home Depot, and it's very simple to use, nice little easy way to carry it. You can carry it in a smaller container, probably would in something like this, but I just fit what I found lying around that I would show you. Next up, we did the review on the whistle. I like a, a, a communications device, and this is a communications device. It's to say, hey, I'm here. I like having something like that. Um, it's very easy to uh, carry in there, but weighs practically nothing. And not only can this signal for help, but it also can kind of rattle the nerves of somebody walking too close to you. Because if you start blowing this thing, they're going to be like, wait a minute, I don't want to be seen. This is drawing attention to me. Let me get out of here. At least most will. <laughs> All right? I do have a little AM, FM shortwave radio in here. Um, you guys probably remember this guy here. Let's pop it on for you real quick. It does have weather band, shortwave, AM, and FM. I'd probably stick an external antenna in this thing too as well. Uh, just a roll-up piece of wire with an alligator clip on the end so I can hear more stuff. Basically what you do with that is you pull up that antenna there, you clip your alligator clip on it, throw your wire up into a tree, and boom, you've got a shortwave antenna. I do have masks now. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. It's not for the pandemic. These are N95 masks, and the reason I carry these is because I still remember after 9-11, with people walking away from that debris covered in stuff, you couldn't get these in New York City. Um, disasters, explosions, whatever, that kind of stuff, 
you want something covering your face. You may not want to breathe in all that dust and debris. So that's why I've always, way before COVID ever started, always had an extra three uh, N95 mask, one of these type things folded up in my gear. Main reason I did it, you know. Um, let's see what else is in here. Okay, got a little bit of coffee. Again, you know, this is more to stuff the bag. You would probably bring one tube of coffee. But anyway, you got that in there. And I do have a little bit of tin foil too as well to make a little fire break around the thing. I have a little uh, bushcraft knife in there, a UCO utensil kit if I'm eating something. And again, I just threw this in here, probably in a get-home bag for shorter, shorter term. I just throw some energy bars in there, but you see it fit in there. All right, next up, a tarp with some stakes. This tarp can set up a little shelter for you. Um, again, people underestimate how far distances are because you're in a car and you think 15 miles, that's nothing. Walk it and you'll see how much that is. So this does have a little, uh, it does have its little uh, stakeouts and stakes there. You can put this up, have some shelter for a night if you have to stop and rest between that trip home. Or if it's unsafe to travel the rest of the way, you can stop and rest and kind of readjust things and get your bearings and go from there. Back here, there's the power kit, All right? There's your little power bank. I got it coming out through there. I have both plugged in. I do have a little, uh, this is an E-Tech City water filter. It's similar to the Sawyer Mini. I just put it in there because it was a little bit of a thinner profile. And a little bag, a squeeze bag that connects to that thing. You squeeze it through and you got yourself a water filter. Works great. I think I'm missing one other thing in here. Yep, I was. All right, in here, basic fire starting kit. Does not have to be this complicated. You can just take those matches and some tinder. This is really, again, this is out of my scooter kit, my emergency kit, if I want to start a fire, um, you know, to, uh, to keep myself warm or whatever. Uh, basically, maybe all I need is a lighter. You don't need all this stuff. I just, again, it's filler for the bag. Now, the last thing I have in here, up top, is a headlamp. And we recently reviewed this little light band here. I don't have it plugged in because I didn't want it to activate. But this is a nice little headlamp that you got, little cob LEDs on the front, excuse me. There you go. Nice big wide ray of color. You do have a rechargeable uh, battery in here. I believe it's two 18650s. And to use it, you would just plug that in there and you're ready to go. Or to charge it, you unplug this and plug that into the outside of your power bank. So, a way to keep things topped off and charged, very handy. Again, maybe I take a, a thin film 10 15 watt solar panel and slide it in there as well. There's more than enough room, it goes all the way down. So definitely more than enough room in this thing. I'm going to take this out too so I can show you what fit in here. And I didn't even bother to put anything on that little side pouch underneath. So let's put this back here. Let me toss it back here and show you all the stuff that we managed to get in that bag. Okay. So there is definitely room in this thing. And again, for a get-home bag that you want to blend in and say a metro kind of, you know, office environment, you really can't beat that. And there's a whole lot to be said just blending in in an emergency instead of sticking out like a sore thumb with your camo backpack and tactical pants and all that other stuff so definitely a good lesson you know um, if you don't have something like this you don't necessarily need this I will put a link down below where you can pick up the uh, the backpack um, it is it, it will be in the description it's from Banggood uh, I have been just having a blast shopping over there finding cool stuff and I saw this and I said not only do I like it just for my own use but Think about it. if you're working in an office environment or, a, you know, a, a, my thing would be like a trade show. I'm going to some like shot show or something and I don't want to stick out like tactical Timmy running out of there with my backpack. I want to just kind of blend in with the crowd in Vegas, maybe get away from whatever happened, the disaster, whatever's going on and make my way home. Something like that would be good. Now, if I had to walk home from Vegas, which is 60 miles, you can bet I'd use a bigger backpack and <laughs> something a little more you know, substantial. But for just something to get you home, like I said, disasters don't always happen on a Sunday afternoon when you're sitting watching a football game. Sometimes they happen on a Monday afternoon where you're buried in paperwork, the phone's ringing, and bam, there's a terrorist attack, a disaster, a fire, a flood, whatever. That's when they normally happen. They don't happen when you, they're convenient for you. It's like I tell people, um, disasters don't care what party you belong to. You know, hurricanes don't go, okay, let's hit the Republicans today and the Democrats tomorrow. They don't care. So being prepared at your office or place of work with something that doesn't scream, look at me, I'm a prepper. And that definitely doesn't scream prepper. That backpack does not scream prepper. Matter of fact, I was kind of hesitant in showing it because I'm thinking, 
oh man, people are going to think I'm showing just stuff I want to buy for, you know, for myself or something, you know. It's not really a tactical prepper type item, but I, I really like it and I think it does have its application when you're trying to blend in. So anyway, that is the video. That is the Banji Hard Shell Backpack. I will put a link down below if you're interested in checking it out. I'm going to move the camera up a little bit so you can actually see it. It is a fairly large, decent sized capacity backpack and I got that in there with no problem at all. All this gear down here. I got it in there with no issue at all. It is a very nice lightweight backpack. Uh, it does offer a little bit of protection. I would even use this as a range bag. I mean, heck, you know, if you're going to an indoor range somewhere or something, that's perfectly fine, you know, for your for your uh, firearms or weapons when you're going in a range. Um, you could use it for that. You can use it for whatever you want, really. But I'm thinking, you know, this doesn't stand out in a city environment. Me with my, you know, 5.11 Rush backpack, you know, <laughs> with gear hanging off it. Uh, might stick out a whole lot more. And that's one of the things about being a survivalist or a prepper is you want to blend in. You don't want to stick out when something's going on. You can stick out once you get back home and you got your gear and you got your bug out location. That's fine. Go put on your you know 5'11 pants and your uh, camo t-shirt and you're good to go. But when you're out in an urban environment and there's a disaster going on, there's chaos, there's confusion, um, something like this, Again, not easy to, to kind of reach in there when you're standing in a crowd of people. It takes a little bit of effort. You can lock it. Again, locks keep honest people out. You know, they're not going to keep a dedicated criminal out of this bag at all. But when you're standing in a crowd, you're going to feel somebody fidgeting with that lock a whole lot more than somebody just pulling the zipper and stealing stuff out of it. So anyway, like I said, Banshee Hard Shell Backpack. Check it out. Uh, it's just an idea, folks. If you don't like the idea, you can find a bag that you like that might fit in better in your environment. But I thought this would fit in pretty good with uh, going to trade shows or in an office environment or something like that. I thought it would fit in pretty good and not stick out. Um, that's the link down below. Check them out. Like I said, they're about 80 bucks. And Banggood is coming up with a sale. It's actually running now until I believe the 23rd. So you might want to go check them out anyway. they got a bunch of stuff on sale. I will put the links down below for those sales as well. Below that, we have our Jace Medical. If you want to get prescribed antibiotics from an American pharmacy, doctors, with a consultation, that's the way to go. Emergency antibiotics legally to your door, shipped to you, prescribed to you, without buying them off some Russian website and cryptocurrency. <laughs> you legitimately get what you want. Okay? Below that's our Amazon affiliate store. Check them out. I got all my stuff in there that I've reviewed. My freeze-dried wholesalers link. That link saves you 15% down there. My My Patriot supply link. We are running a special this month. It is... $50 off a four-week kit. So check it out. Four weeks worth of food. Save 50 bucks this month. Prepare with Iridium.com. Prepare with Iridium.com. And our Thrive Life freeze-dried food store as well. If you're interested in trying Thrive Out, go ahead and make an order. Check it out. See if you like it. Anyway, folks, I thank you for watching. Stay safe and stay prepared.